Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jim Hodson here at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum, home to the most touchable warbirds in Texas. It is October 16th, 2021. And uh, we are here the, today to uh, talk to our latest acquisition, Hello Hiller. Uh, this is a, a helicopter that we just brought back, uh, just arrived here at the museum this week. It's an H-23 Hiller Raven. Uh, it's a pretty unusual airplane. This is a uh, this is a, uh, a Korean War vintage airplane, and uh, we're going to walk around it a little bit and then talk about it. This particular one has a very interesting uh, history. Uh, this airplane uh, was uh, originally <coughs> built as a uh, uh, as originally built as as a trainer. Uh, and Joe, if you can hear me okay, will you give me a thumbs up, please? We had some audio issues. I've got a new phone, and audio isn't always uh, always uh, been working out for us too well. So uh, if, if you all can hear me okay, just give me a thumbs up, please. And at any rate, the, we know that this one is a trainer uh, because it's got the smaller engine. When the Hillers were built, and this, uh, they originally started out in 1948. It's a... Uh, uh, this is essentially a Korean War vintage airplane, and uh, so the uh, this airplane, when it was originally built, it was delivered to the Navy first. This was a Navy airplane. This particular airplane was a Navy airplane. Uh, the Navy used them on board ships and for a number of different things. After the Navy was finished with this one, it went to Fort Walters here in Texas, where it was a trainer. Uh, it has. We're going to take a look at this. Uh, you'll notice the engine on this one is a six cylinder inline engine and it's mounted uh, vertically which is not normally the case uh, on helicopters right for any of you who are familiar with these things or familiar with helicopters at all so this is a franklin o355 and uh, we know because it's a franklin o355 that it was originally built to be a, a trainer uh, or a uh, or potentially with, considering with the Navy that it was gonna be an observation airplane, maybe SAR, I'm not, not really sure what the Navy did with them, other than the fact that we've seen them on board, uh, on board uh, ships. So you've got the, uh, the motor right here, which connects directly to the transmission and then up to the swash plate and the, uh, and the rotors. Now, those aren't the rotors that are on there. What I'm told is that those devices act somewhat as ailerons, uh, we have the rotors coming in and uh, we will have those to, uh, to put on the airplane later. Two place, and as we said, this was Fort Walters first. So uh, in Fort Walters, it was used as a trainer, uh, initial trainer, I'm told. You notice it's got a very wide base, so it was, a, it was an issue for us uh, when, we, uh, when we brought it back, putting it on a trailer. It's much wider than uh, any of the other helicopters that we've got other than the 53. So I'm gonna try to back up here and give you a wide, wide view. So one of the things that makes this uh, very interesting, in addition to the fact that it, it has a history uh, with North Texas here in terms of it having been a trainer uh, at Fort Walters, is that when uh, the Army was done with it at Fort Walters, it went to a little place called Eagle Mountain Lake Army Base. Uh, took a little bit of searching to figure out what that was all about, but it turns out that uh, when the Marine Corps had, uh, had finished using Marine Corps Air Station Eagle Mountain Lake, which is now the Copeland Ministries, by the way, uh, that the Army came in with, a, I believe it was the 49th Armored Division. And so this, this helicopter was used here at Eagle Mountain Lake and it was used with the Army's uh, armored division, probably as a spotter, potentially as a liaison airplane, but it spent time, time here, right here in the Metroplex, right here in Fort Worth. So that's one of the things that makes this really unusual because the uh, base at Eagle Mountain Lake is really interesting. Uh, during the Second World War, Fort Worth was the only, the only city in the country that had bases for all three of the services at that time. It had uh, Tarrant Airfield, which is, uh, which is now the JRB. We had uh, NAS Dallas, which was over in Dallas. And the Marine Corps had Marine Corps Air Station Eagle Mountain Lake, which is up on uh, North Eagle Mountain, up near Newark, uh, Newark, Texas. 
and the Marine Corps did uh, F7F training up there. They did some glider training. They had some amphib they had some amphibious gliders that didn't work. Thank goodness. Uh, right now it's in silver. We don't know what we're going to do with it. We like I said, we just got it. So, but Eagle Mountain Lake was a place that the Marine Corps worked out of for a number of years, and when they uh, finished working with it, you know, here's a here's a bit of trivia for. Uh, for any of you that are familiar with Marine Corps Air Stations. Uh, what Marine Corps Air Wing was Marine Corps Air Station Eagle Mountain Lake? If anybody's got, uh, thinks they know which, which Marine Corps Air Wing that was, uh, let me know. Just pop it up here on the screen and I'll tell you in a little bit. But at any rate, once the, uh, once the Marine Corps uh, finished using Eagle Mountain Lake in the 50s, uh, the Army took it over as an Air National Guard base, and we really don't know a lot about that. We've seen some pictures of, uh, of, a, uh, of tanks and armor up there, but uh, it was really in kind of disrepair when the, when the Army came and took it over. And finally, the Army pretty much abandoned it later on. And uh, when they, after they did, there was a movie that was made out there. And I don't have my, my notes with me, but it, it had something to do with the F-102 pilots going through some sort of a time warp and uh, and then uh, showing up out at that air station in the future or something and it was all dilapidated. Eventually uh, all of that stuff was taken down and uh, Copeland Ministries took it over because the, uh, uh, the runways are still out there and it's still a good location. So we're going to give you a view of inside the cockpit now that we've kind of done a walk around on this one. Now this, again, this is very rudimentary. This is late 1940s, 1950s uh, era technology. It is essentially a Korean War vintage uh, device. See how close we can get here and give you a good, good view of the instrument panel. But this is in surprisingly good condition. And uh, we will plan to do a restoration of it of some sort uh, due to its size. Uh, this may become a traveling helicopter for us, but it certainly uh, it certainly has a has a history in North Texas, and especially with the Marine Corps, with the uh, air station or the the airfield at Eagle Mountain Lake. Okay, we're going to walk around and give you another view inside the. Uh, oops, I've lost control of the lost control of the phone here. Sorry, it's moving. It's coming back really slow. There we come. Hate it when it does that. Okay, and here's a look at the instrument panel from the other side. So you can see we've got uh, knots, airspeed indicators. Uh, the helicopter weighs about 1,800 pounds, and. <laughs> Uh, I get a kick out of it. It shows 140 knots on here. This airplane could do about 82 miles an hour. That was about it. You know, but you can see that you've got the uh, uh, fuel and oil, uh, cylinder temperatures, uh, the max, uh, uh, the manifold pressure, altimeter, gas, and a bunch of circuit breakers and some switches, master switch. Pretty rudimentary, okay? Very simple, but that was the whole idea of using it for a trainer, is that it was, uh, it was very simple. So let's see, Eagle Mountain Lake. I haven't seen anybody come up with, uh, with what air wing uh, this uh, uh, Eagle Mountain Lake was. Let's see, we got another data plate up here of some sort, if we can read this. It says Hiller Aircraft, and it says serial number 1419. And uh, we'll clean all of this stuff up and get dates and things off of them later on. Uh, but uh, at any rate, after it left here, because it did leave uh, Eagle Mountain Lake and, uh, and went, uh, went on to, uh, to be with the Army for quite a while, up in Kansas with the uh, Air National Guard in Kansas. So, nobody's got an answer for what air wing Eagle Mountain Lake was when it was a Marine Corps base, huh? Okay, it was the 9th Air Wing. The 9th Marine Corps Air Wing. Anybody ever heard of the 9th? Anybody know where the 9th was stationed or based? Okay, I've given you enough time. I don't want you Googling this and looking it up. The, the 9th Marine Air Corps Wing 
was based at Cherry Point, North Carolina. And from there, e uh, Marine Corps Air Station Eagle Mountain Lake was considered an auxiliary airfield. How about that, huh? An auxiliary airfield here in Fort Worth for North Carolina. Didn't exist for a long time. Uh, and after the war, towards the end of the war, uh, the Marine Corps uh, stopped using it. And that's when the Army took it over. So this is our, our latest addition. And uh, this gives us something in the area of, we haven't counted them up lately, 31 or 32 airplanes now in the collection. And we know we've got at least two more coming in the next few months. Uh, so we can use some help with, uh, with putting these things in shape and condition. This one obviously is in pretty good shape, but it's still rough and needs to be cleaned up and fixed up and some parts replaced and, uh, and repainted and put in a good livery. But this is a really nice addition and especially with the history with, with Eagle Mountain Lake. If anybody's got any history on, on Hillers at Eagle Mountain Lake, uh, let us know. Again, this is a Hiller H23 Raven and it's got the small Franklin engine in it. And again, anybody who's got any information, let us know. We can always use some help out here, regardless of what the airplanes are. Uh, always things to do. Uh, we will be at the Alliance Air Show next week. Uh, we're gonna take one of the helicopters up there, but we'll have a booth there, and we're gonna be working with some of the volunteer organizations here locally to do a, a small discovery zone uh, with the emphasizing uh, STEM. 99s are going to help us, uh, the CAP is going to help us, and uh, Tarrant County College is going to help us. So after that, we've got Bronco Fest in November. Everybody's invited to that, but you can find out about uh, that on, on our website. Bronco Fest is going to go from November 10th to the 14th. And uh, also, just an update on uh, Hops and Props. Hops and Props was a success for us this year. Uh, with all the challenges we had, it still was a success. So we're going to put it back on its normal schedule, which is going to be in April. And it's going to be, uh, let's see, let's see, we'll look great in the Army Training Command. I think that's probably what we'll do with it, is put it in Army Training Command colors. That uh, seems to make the most sense. Uh, but we will be doing hops and props April 30th. And so uh, we'll be back with you uh, probably next week. We'll see what we can drag up next week. Going to give you just a quick spin around the ramp here. We're still waiting to get the A4 painted. Uh, that's, that's been, uh, it's been all kinds of issues, but we could, uh, we could use some help. If you want to help paint an airplane, you can come on out. We've got the ejection trainer off the trailer now. And we will start to make some plans for how we're going to deal with that. But this is an OV-1 Mohawk ejection trainer. Uh, really nice find and then over here we have moved our F4C onto the ramp so it is scheduled for refurbishing and we're going to put that in the 433rd tactical fighter wing so that's about it for today just wanted to update you with the uh, things that are going on hope I didn't make anybody too dizzy uh, there's some of the guys who retrieved it the other day and so uh, from here at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum home to the most touchable warbirds in Texas. Thanks for joining us. Come out and visit, and uh, see you next week. Bye.